I worked on Event Horizon and uh, I finished on that, went on and done, supervised the model unit on Lost in Space for, um, God, they changed their name so many times, but at the time I think it was Magic Models at Shepparton. We had some guys on the model unit on Lost in Space um, that made some nice little like signs up to go on the sides of the spaceships, which were fairly sort of innocent but stupid comments on. I thought, well, you know, you get that projected up big on the big screen, that might be readable and it might be... So I got a little bit... Um, well, what's the word I'm looking for? I just, I just made sure they didn't appear on the models because, you know, when you're when you're at the sharp end, you're the one that wears it all, even if you weren't involved. So, from 2000 onwards in this country, we seem to have this health and safety mania that that took over, and you know, you can, and it's good really because. I know several people that have got problems like asthma and other related problems that definitely come from working with fiberglass resin and various other stuff and being on stage with smoking, you know, a smoke-filled stage all day, every day for weeks on end when we were shooting that stuff for Lost in Space, for instance. I mean, we were on stage in smoke, day in, day out, shooting like 50-minute motion control passes and stuff. Uh, and I had a real problem with the fact that everything that I seemed to work hard at really didn't end up coming to anything other than being smashed up, being, you know, destroyed. Uh, which is a strange way to look at it, and yet that's not how I feel now, because that end product of what it looks like on film is the important thing, and, and how it interacts with everything else on the film. Uh, and I suppose it's one of them things, crisis in life, and you tend to read too much into it. Or, but uh, now I look back on on a lot of the stuff that I've done now, and people that I've worked with, and I miss it. I miss it terribly. And whilst what I'm doing now, I thoroughly enjoy, uh, and, and I get a lot of creative satisfaction from. It's it, it, when you're working on your own. It's not the same as working in a team and bouncing ideas off each other. Um, and the whole job benefits from the fact that you work as a creative team. And, well, you know what I mean? It's just, it, it, it's... I don't think there'll ever be a time in the film industry where anything like that comes back again. And I really, really... I'd love to go back and do a job. Like, oh, we, we went and done a movie called Slipstream out in Turkey. Again, that was all big flying models. And, and, and actually, there's several of the things where there's people that are interested in the model side and what we do. It seems to bring out the little boy and grown-ups, you know, so they've got to come and join in. And, and so it's been good from that point of view in that in, in many cases we've got to meet you know, quite quite a lot of the the stars of the movies, rather than just being the backroom boffins and part of the second unit and what have you, we've we've actually had you know a little bit more contact with the glamour side of it. But <laughs> most of it wasn't glamour. When you're at three o'clock in the morning and you, all you can smell is fiberglass fumes and you're too knackered to even think properly, and you've got to be on stage with this job that's not really gone right, purely and simply because you haven't had time to plan it properly in the first place. You know, at three o'clock in the morning and, and you just want to go home and sleep and it doesn't feel very glamorous then. And then you turn up for a crew preview and everybody's there and your family are there. and you know, it's, it, there's, a, there's a lot of great stuff that all went together that made it special.